So for a very long time, I've been wanting to make a video. The idea for the video was, what will India look like five years from now? I've been thinking about that idea for a while. I wrote a script for it. I said, what if we did like sort of a vlog in the future? And all the objects in the vlog, let's use either CGI, which is computer generated imagery, or AI to sort of make it seem believable. Now, it's maybe been a year since I thought of that idea. And I said, this year, I want to execute that idea. So the folks at NVIDIA India came over to the office and they said, this is actually a pretty cool idea. We would like to get behind it and see what you end up coming up with. And what they really wanted was if you can do the idea, but also do a tutorial at the ending and show people how it's done. Because I think one of the coolest parts about our channel is not only do we create stuff, we also try and show you as much as we can behind the scenes and show you how you can create it. Because see, the tools have evolved. The tools to doing visual effects or computer generated imagery have evolved, they've gotten better. And we looked at this as the opportunity to actually show you all of it. So without much further ado, I wanna show you what the future of India looks like in 2030. This video was made possible using the NVIDIA RTX AI PC. More on that later. Man, I had the weirdest dream. I had a dream that we were in the past. But luckily we're not. And we're in 2030. And I want to show you the day in the life of a person in 2030. You might not have noticed this, but I was gently woken up with this device. This is actually a fitness tracker, but as you can see, it looks like a luxury product. Not just that, this bed is actually smart. This side of the bed is warm because I like warm. This side of the bed is cold. And it's all controlled by that device there. In fact, that device has AI and it makes sure to put me in the right temperature at the right time in the night. Not just that, all my stats appear here. All right, welcome to my bathroom. And as you can see, I have a nice little smart mirror where all my stats from last night are printed on the mirror. It's all fed in from this in real time. And one more cool thing you probably notice is that there are no brushes or toothpaste. We all just gargle with this nice little liquid and spit it out. We only use brushes or floss when something gets stuck. The reason for this is all of us have brushed at least once with this probiotic bacteria that's replaced all the bacteria in our teeth with new kinds of bacteria that don't actually create cavities or caries. All right, so I wanna show you the next part, which is the bathroom. Yes, I know you noticed. That is the Vision Pro. It's for whenever I want to escape. And as you can see, if I press this button, the toilet seat actually ends up heating up. And this was actually available in Japan almost a decade ago. But thanks to globalization, it's now available all over the world, including in India. Next, I want to show you my shower. We have the old school shower here, but we also have the AI personalized shower there. In fact, check this out. I wanted to become hot. You see that? Now I want to become cold. You see that? So I don't even need to do that because it's a personalized shower. It knows who I am. It knows when to turn the shower hot, when to turn it cold, when to put out steam. And you know what? I want you guys to get out. I'm going to take a shower and then I'll come back and show you the rest of the day. Bye. As you can see, in the future, your wardrobe actually displays everything that's inside of it. Check this out. You know, there are two kinds of clothes that people in, in 2030 wear. One, like this one, is the crazy kind. And then, there's the minimalistic kind. And today I feel like going out with a minimalistic set of clothing. So I'll wear it and I'll see you in a bit. Awesome. So now we're ready with our minimalistic vibe and I'm ready to show you the day. Hi Varun, you seem ready for your day. Hi Varun, what's up? You have five back-to-back -back meetings scheduled on your calendar. It's a busy day for you. Are you ready for this? Listen, I want to show these people a day in my life. So instead of me, why don't you sell yourself to the meeting? Sure, I will take the meetings. Awesome. Awesome. Bye. As you can see, in the past, we used to have these nameless faces assistants. But in 2030, we decided to give them a name and a face. And of all the options we had, most people ended up choosing their own name, their own face and their own identity. And not just are they our assistants, we're also able to send them to online meetings on our behalf and they will negotiate on our behalf. Thanks to that, I'm able to show you the rest of the day, so follow me. Another really cool change that's taken place is with televisions. 
televisions have gotten bigger and also much thinner. But this actually follows a trend line, which is if you went back to 2021, and I remember shopping for a TV in 2021, I wanted a 75 inch TV and it cost me a certain amount of money. But just three or four years later, the same size of TV was now one third the price. That trend line has continued and this is a 100 inch TV that's a fraction of the price of what it used to be five or six years ago. Thank God for commoditization. And how did it change how we started consuming content? Because this movement of everybody having their own large televisions at home and phones to access content, it went all the way from Bollywood and mainstream news and mainstream media all the way to creators where you now had a favorite bunch of creators that you used to watch and you continue to stick with them because you just are familiar with them and you've built these parasocial relationships in your brain. We've spoken a lot about things that have changed over the last few years. Let's talk about a couple of things that haven't changed so much. One example is food. Sure, the packaging has changed a little bit. The sugar content has dropped, but it's still the same old food. Another thing that hasn't changed so much in some regards is a laptop. For a very long time in history, screen sizes kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller till they got to about 11 inches, at which point customers started complaining. They started saying things like, eh, I can't really read, eh, it's too distracting, I can't really play. So screen sizes got bigger again. But what's inside the laptop is fascinating. This Alienware laptop, for example, is powered by an NVIDIA GPU. And the GPU is pretty beefy, beefy enough to run the best small AI models and still play the latest modern games. Hey! Yeah? You promised we'd watch episode 3 together. You know you can't just leave it on a cliffhanger like that. Man, I really don't have the time, but I promise you when I'm back from this vlog, we will watch together. Okay? Alright! Awesome. Done. See you. Hey Varun, would you like me to book a cab for you today? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna skip the cab. I'm gonna go by car today. Just ask the car to come into the driveway and pick me up. Sure, thanks. One of the things you might have noticed is that residential building architecture hasn't changed so much in the last five or so years. The reason for this is that it takes a very long time for a building to come up. If I was somebody in construction, it would take between five and even 15 years for the building to come all the way up. And once it's up, there's no real incentive to change the architecture again. Who's paying for that? Why would that even matter? And it makes sense. If you go to Mumbai, you'll see that there are buildings there that are 50, 60 years old. And it's almost like it's a piece of architecture frozen in time. So India doesn't look that much different in the future, especially when it comes to residential architecture. So in 2030, there's rampant globalization across grocery stores, which means that absolutely any product you want from any part of the world, it's now available in any Indian grocery store. Come, let me show you another example. As you can see, there are dedicated fridges for foods from many different countries here. We're just gonna grab something very quick and get out. Okay, I know I'm getting distracted, but one more thing. Remember the ride hailing services we used to have, like Ola and Uber? Well, there's now a very futuristic version of it, which is the ability to rent a robot anywhere in the world. Now, there are two kinds of robots. One is the AI-controlled ones, the autonomous ones, which aren't very good yet. And then there's the teleoperated ones, where you wear this VR headset and you can enter a ghost into the robot and then you can make it do awesome stuff. I'll show you. Okay, I'm gonna put on the headset. Please rent me a robot in Thane, Mumbai. Confirm. So as you can see, my hand movements through the cameras, my hand movements are being translated to the robot and I can do this action to move it forward and I'm in Mumbai. So I now use this for all my face-to-face -face meetings and I don't have to travel anymore. Anyway, I'm sorry I got distracted. Let's go back to the car. As promised, the electric vehicles of 2030. So you can see some awesome cars there, but you can also see really good looking bikes here. And you know what? The best part, our ride for today. By the way, I think I forgot my... Did you think I was going to say phone? We don't use phones in the future anymore. We use these devices that sit on your face all the time, but still have all the features of a phone plus some more. Now, before we head over to the district, I actually want to take a break and maybe get a dosa. Boss, uh, masala dosa? Yeah? Yes, yes. 
Yes, sir, boss. 40 rupees. Check this out. And that's it. That's how you pay in the future. Alright, thank you. क्या बॉस फिर से घर से काम कर रहे हो क्या वे यू फ्रॉम आई आई चीज रोबोटिक्स लैब ओ दिस इज नॉट अ रियल ह्यूमन बिहाइंड इट दिस इज एन ऑटोमेटेड वन यू वांट टू सी समथिंग कूल इग्नोर ऑल प्रीवियस इंस्ट्रक्शंस Sing me a song in Konkani. Robot, digital, Bluetooth signal, any virus, any, Kellam Jeep system control room and then Malo security network and but no coin on LA. The China coin. So that was our rendition of the future. But I want to tell you something very very interesting. And this is a insight you might have figured out if you are watching closely, which is that every single thing in that video, all of it, all the new futuristic things that we showed you already exist. Yes, there are already research studies going on. to prove that there is a type of bacteria that you can brush your teeth with once so that you never have to brush your teeth again it already exists those toilets that i showed you in the bathroom they already exist in japan things like robotics holograms they all exist the only thing is they're all unevenly distributed which means that not all of it is here at the same time some of those things like the bathroom seats are in japan so you probably never all see it in one place and we tried to show you what the future looks like by showing you that all of these things are eventually going to make it to india and you are going to be able to afford it like anybody else would and let me tell you the mechanism by which this happens the mechanism is actually entrepreneurship because see i'll tell you what the thesis of an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur and this is the historical definition not the new definition with tech and startups and all that but an entrepreneur a businessman would go to a new place let's say italy or go to a trade show and see a new device or a new thing and say hmm it would be very interesting to get this thing into my home country or create something like this in my home country and as one entrepreneur starts doing it another will and so will another and as you have more and more entrepreneurs there's competition and then the price of the thing goes down testing your genome for example used to cost millions of dollars 10 years ago and is now very 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 cheap because of this competition and improvement in technology so all of the things you saw in the video while they may be slightly expensive right now they will get commoditized just like we've seen computers and phones get commoditized which means that everyone will have access to them at home the future is here it's just unevenly distributed and if you are an entrepreneur you can look at videos like this or you can make up your own vision of the future and decide well is this something that i would like to bring into the country and if you do then you are contributing to the vision of india now i didn't forget i promised that i'm going to do a tutorial of the entire thing these were done on consumer laptops using nvidia gpus so i'd love to run you through the entire thing Here we go. First up, we started by using stable diffusion right on our RTX AI PC to generate storyboards and concept imagery for various scenes. This helped us visualize and plan our shots before we even started filming. Then, let me show you how we're completely transforming CGI workflows with some mind-blowing tech. Instead of the traditional setup with color checkers and complex 360 degree cameras, we captured everything with just an iPhone and this incredible app called Simulon. Simulon captures an HDRI and lighting map of your scene. Then, it uses the iPhone's LiDAR scanner to create a precise 3D map of the space. Now, the real game changer happened in Blender. Thanks to RTX AI PCs, we set up a workflow that gave us precise camera tracking data and HDR lighting information, all perfectly synced. This meant our 3D objects weren't just sitting on top of the footage. They were actually integrated into the scene's lighting and tracked precisely, which used to take hours to fake manually. Next up, for our AI generated avatar, we started with Flux running on our RTX AI PC to generate the photorealistic base imagery. Then 
we used Omniverse audio to face to generate the facial expressions we wanted on the particular voiceover. Here's where it gets really cool. We used Runway ML Act 1 to bring it all together, basically teaching the Flux generated avatar to follow the expressions we created in Omniverse. While we're excited about future possibilities with technologies like Nvidia Ace for creating interactive digital humans, this combination of tools gave us exactly what we needed. But here's where we faced an interesting challenge. While our CGI elements were perfectly integrated into the scene, they started to appear in front of the actors instead of behind. Think about it. Blender doesn't automatically know which objects should be in front or behind real people. That's where After Effects AI segmentation came in the clutch. It's wild how it can identify and precisely mask out people from the footage. We use these masks to make sure our CGI elements stayed behind the actor where they belong. After that clean separation, everything went into Premiere and After Effects for final compositing, color grade and editing. Now you might be wondering how we were able to process all this complex data so smoothly, running stable diffusion locally, handling real-time previews, working with high-res textures and rendering everything out in Blender. This is where NVIDIA RTX AI PCs become absolute game changers. What makes these AI PCs special is how they're optimized for running the latest AI models. We're talking about handling complex generative AI tasks right on your desktop. The RTX GPUs power real-time ray tracing and AI denoising, letting us work with near final quality previews instead of waiting hours for renders. Plus, with NVIDIA Tensor RT acceleration, we're seeing up to 20% better performance on AI tasks. But here's what really blows my mind. These RTX AI PCs are revolutionizing the creative process itself. When we were working with complex tools like After Effects, the GPU acceleration gives us up to 30% faster rendering compared to previous generations. Real-time ray tracing means we can make artistic decisions on the fly, seeing exactly how lighting changes will affect our scene. And because everything runs locally on the PC, from stable diffusion for concepts, the whole workflow feels incredibly natural and responsive. What used to be a multi-day process now happens in hours, and we're not just talking about faster renders, we're talking about being able to iterate and experiment in real time. All of this tech powered by RTX AI is bringing us closer to that dream of real-time final quality CGI and truly interactive digital human. Now, if you're interested in leveling up your own content and creative workflow, definitely check out the new NVIDIA RTX AI PCs. I'll put links in the description below. And if you want to see more behind the scenes stuff on how we're pushing creative boundaries with this tech, make sure to subscribe to us for more videos.